Hi, I'm Supermoon Tarot, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you an easy trick that will help you to be able to speak to your spirit guides right now. <laughs> now, there are a multitude of ways that you can talk to your spirit guides or how they try to reach out to you. They always are. If you want to say, hey, what's up back? Here's a method. I've got a bunch of them, but this is one version of it. I accidentally came up with this method, but it is very effective. So I want to teach it to you guys today. Now you need um, some tarot cards. This is all you're going to really need. And this is totally different than the pick a card or like when I draw a bunch of tarot cards type of style. This is a totally different formula and vibe and whatever. So the first thing you need to do is cast a circle. Now you might say, uh, I'm not a witch. Doesn't matter. You can do this version of casting a circle, no matter what you're into. Think of it like this. So this is you, you're a little cutie. Maybe you're a cool little cutie. <laughs> and you want to create a mental barrier between you and anything else. You can think of it as a circle. You can think of it as a body armor. It doesn't matter what it is or what you believe. It's some form of armor that will prevent anything else from trying to influence the messages coming into your card. So when other stuff tries to pop up, it's just going to bounce back off of this. If you say, hey, I cast a circle of protection. No other energies can enter my circle except for my own and my spirit guides. It, that's then it will be. So that's the first thing you want to do because you don't want anything else influencing your cards. Now we're on to step number two, ground yourself. This can just take, a, you can take a moment of silence, you can meditate, you can think happy thoughts, whatever it is. Now, if you go into tarot when you're incredibly emotional or angry, it's gonna reflect that. I'm not saying you still can't get answers, you don't necessarily have to ground yourself, but I find if I go into asking questions and I'm very emotional, um, it's like my spirit guides will only reflect that and kind of try to more comfort me rather than giving me answers I need. So just take a moment, Chill out, take a second, and just feel steady. Number three, shuffle your cards. Now, in any other instance, it doesn't matter how you shuffle your cards. Everyone's got their own method. But in this particular situation, you wanna shuffle them a particular way because that's how we're gonna get our answers. So all you're doing is you take your cards and you're just doing a kind of very loose, this method. You can do this method as well, but I find I get better results if I do this method. You're just picking up, you know, whatever you pick up, you go like this. And you're doing this very loose handedly, going over and over. You do want to try to turn them, get upright, reversed, unless you only want to read them upright. There, again, there's no wrong or right way to um, read tarot. You do whatever works with you. But I, I like to have the reversed and upright. So you're just shuffling. Number four, ask questions. Yep, that's right. You're just going to reach out and go, Hi, spirit guides. This is all why you're shuffling. Hi, spirit guides. Uh, how are you doing? What's up? This is my problem. This is what I need answers to. La da 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 da. You kind of get into a conversation with them. You're going to most likely want to do this alone because you are going to need to say this out loud. You're going to acknowledge them. You're going to talk to them like they're right there. They are right there, but this is like, this, there's a sort of barrier for most people where they can't directly hear them. So pretend this is them talking back to you. And so this is why the shuffling cards is so important. As you're shuffling loosely, and you're going to want to kind of get fast about this, you're going to want to get into some sort of a trance. This will happen naturally. I find it has a heightened level of happening naturally, no matter your meditative past or experience. Um, just this act of doing this with your hands and you're just talking to them. You might say, hey, how are you? What are you doing? You're just talking to them. This trance that you get into, cards are gonna just start falling, okay? And as they fall, th this is your direct answer to specifically what you are saying. So, you know, you're gonna go, oh, okay, and then you're gonna put that back, which leads us to our next stage. Number five, acknowledge and reply. So as you're shuffling your cards and particular cards drop, you're going to want to drop a card, and as that card drops, you're going to acknowledge it, that it's the answer to whatever you asked. And you wanna be like, oh, did you mean this? And then you're gonna put it back. 
Now, if you keep, get, the reason why you want to keep putting it back is because sometimes they'll keep making you drop. No matter how you shuffle the cards, they'll keep dropping the same card because either you're, it's more important that you acknowledge this before they'll give you any other answers. It's imperative that you know that. Or because tarot cards have so many meanings, they want you, you're not picking up the right one. So they want to make sure you understand it. Now, as you're shuffling cards, you will notice that in the beginning, they're kind of, it's almost their version of going, uh-huh, uh-huh, like acknowledging and saying yes to what you're saying. You'll notice cards drop in the beginning that are almost mirror images of whatever you're expressing the question. And as you drop those cards, you're going to go, yes, yes, that's what I mean. Because they're basically saying, do you mean this? Do you mean this and this? And you're going to get a reflective sort of conversation with them back initially. But then as you get into the cards and you pull them and you start to ask questions, they're going to give you exact answers. Now, I do want to point this out with the whole grounding yourself thing. As you pull these cards, um, if you're incredibly emotional, you're just going to get really emotional answers back because you're too supercharged. You're, it's going to come out in the cards and it's not going to be the answer you want. So you want to kind of feel relaxed. So if they tell you something, you can handle it. And this is when the next part goes in. As you ask questions, do not settle for, um, like, it, let's say it's not a happy answer. You don't like whatever you're getting. Don't stop there. Their spirit guides are responding back to you. They're happy to give more. You can ask questions like, can I change it? Is this, if this is, you know, fate, why am I experiencing this? It will it last a long time, a short time. You know what I mean? Like you can keep diving further and further and further into this. And now we have one last little thing I want to add here. How do I read tarot? <laughs> Some of you might not be very well versed in the cards and there's a lot of them and there's a lot of meanings, especially upwards and reversed. It's a lot. Um, people spend their whole lifetime studying them. So if you're new to tarot, I would definitely advise you getting some sort of a cheat sheet. So you're just going to look at a couple words that kind of loosely define the cards depending on their position. Because this is the important thing when you're shuffling. You want to acknowledge, put back, acknowledge, put back. It's like a very fast conversation. The more, the less you have to stop and the more that you're like in sort of a trance, the more of a deeper relationship you're going to build with your spirit guides, the better answers you're going to get. It's a, it's a really positive, you become basically like an antenna or a conduit for this conversation between the two of you. So it's okay if you need to stop, look it up, that's fine. But that's just kind of like a suggestion, especially because most people... You know, like I said, it's a lot. And the other thing I do want to let people know, if you're a new tarot reader, or again, when we talk about the grounding thing and feeling really peaceful and everything like that, when you get certain cards, sometimes people are quick to feel very emotional about whatever answer they're getting. But the thing is, you might be just looking at the worst situation if you're feeling the worst. Cards are very in depth. Look up every single meaning. Well, maybe that's too much. A lot of different meanings to those cards and keep looking through all those different meanings. Don't just pick the worst one. Many times, like, okay, so the tower card, a lot of people think the tower card is just blanketly a negative thing, but a lot of unexpected change that happens in our life is amazing, is wonderful. Definitely, if you have any worries, like when we talk about the conversation and you're shuffling the cards, you know, put the card back and then say to your spirit guides, did you mean this? Did you mean this? And they will reply. Now, you can't force it. You have to just shuffle and let them naturally, like, you know, one, stub your hand and then fall over. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I have a sort of like bonus part about this. Crystals! Yes, the bonus part of this video is with crystals. So you can use whatever you learned from your spirit guides and kind of like bring it into the rest of your life. So if you love crystals like I do, you know that they are, have many uses and meanings depending on the situation. They can help you um, remove obstacles from your life, attract good things, become more attuned with certain energies. Whatever it is you want, there's a crystal for it. Trust me. <laughs> so essentially over here, um, when you're done asking your questions, you can, while you're still in that trance-like state, you say to your spirit guides, hey, thank you for that information you told me. Um, you know, what crystal do you think would best help me with this situation? Now, there's a couple different ways you'll figure out what works for you best. But essentially what I do 
is I will often just not even, I'm not even thinking about it. You want to be in a kind of like a blank state and I'll adjust a crystal. And when you go to adjust a crystal, you don't, for some reason you touch it for whatever reason, that is both you and your spirit guide saying, that's the crystal for me. <laughs> Maybe it's a multitude of crystals. There's no rules. Or this is um, uh, another method. Now, I don't know if I've ever actually spoken about this, but when I split the deck and I'm like shuffling my cards and stuff like that for videos, um, I don't, I don't know how to explain this, but the, 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 like when I go like this and I'm like reshuffling them that way, the deck will, like the group will glow. It's like, I, I can't explain it. It's just so clear to me. That's the one I need to use. So for me, I will often have instances where the crystal almost, it's like everything else goes blurry and it seems brighter and kind of just is so clearly I'm being guided that way. Um, you know, let me know in the comments how you feel drawn to crystals and stuff like that. I would actually love to know. I think it's very interesting. So anyways, I hope this is helpful and informative and makes you feel hopeful and happy about life. I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. It helps out like you would not believe. Either way, have a beautiful day. I look forward to talking to you in the next one. Bye!